Hi everyone, I'm Camilla Morosi, and today I'll be presenting on the use of placebos for individuals with no other treatment options available. Utilizing the placebo effect in modern day clinical practice presents opportunities that are often overlooked. And today I hope to underline its mechanism and highlight the benefit that it can bring to the outlook of patients, as well as the socioeconomic impact it has the potential to give rise to. But first, a bit about me. I'm a rising senior studying in the UK, and I have ambitions of pursuing a medical career with a research-oriented focus as well. At school, I am the president and founder of Neuroscience Society, and I'm one of the heads of medical society. I'm also my debating and public speaking with an extensive debating background at a national level as well, competing in Division One in Singapore. And I've also had the amazing privilege of observing four open heart surgeries, including a heart transplant, as well as Da Vinci robotic surgery, which has really given me an appreciation for advancements in the medical field. I'm also quite a big advocate for individuals with disabilities, and in my free time, I enjoy volunteering, including teaching English to underprivileged children in Hungary and coaching Special Olympics athletes. So during a clinical placement in an intensive care unit, I experienced a patient encounter, which was the driving motivation and inspiration for my topic. I met a patient who was suffering from an unknown condition that was leading to rapid deterioration of his organs, and this slow, grueling process left him in a state of extreme pain and discomfort. The look of despair that the patient gave the, phys the physicians and myself as he begged to be put down after he was told there were no treatments left really stuck with me and made me wonder, what if there was some method of universal treatment which could be utilized in such situations to help with our global health response, which is when my mind turned to placebo. The placebo effect is defined as a beneficial effect produced by a placebo drug or treatment, which cannot be attributed to the properties of the placebo itself and must therefore be due to the patient's belief in that treatment. The use of placebo has already become a prominent feature of clinical trials, notably to prove the efficacy of new medicines and treatments, but until now there's been a curious hesitation to use placebos in the direct treatment of patients in a clinical setting. I'd like to highlight the different types of placebos that exist. It must be understood that the administration of placebo itself falls into two categories for exploration. The first is traditional, in which a physician administers an inert substance, most notably a harmless sugar pill to a patient and claims it has active ingredients. The second is no pill, or in other words, a placebo induced by factors other than a direct pill taken by a patient. This includes how a doctor presents themselves in their office and to what extent they are able to strengthen the trust between doctor to patient. On the contrary, a nocebo, meaning to harm, presents a negative side effect of an inactive substance. This can stem from poor communication between doctor and patient or a negative previous experience of a patient with a certain treatment and must therefore be avoided when implementing the proposed policy. So why exactly should placebo be contextualized for those individuals who have no other treatment options available? To be precise, these patients are individuals who have A, already gone through every course of treatment available, or B, refuse any other course of treatment. Patients who fall into this category include cancer patients that have unsuccessfully gone through treatment, those in palliative care or the terminally ill, as well as patients infected with diseases that currently have no cure. This has to do with the ethics surrounding placebos. A placebo effectively is lying to patients by saying that a substance or an action has active properties to improve their symptoms. This risk is only outweighed under the most severe circumstances requiring immediate intervention, or in other words, only those with no other options available. Now, for the potential of placebo in reducing the strain on healthcare systems, as well as overall inequality on global, in our global health response. With inequalities in health already presenting as a global problem prior to the pandemic, the disparities in the distribution of healthcare and resources between regions have led to increased vulnerability and suffering for many. This is an issue that has only become even more prominent following the impact of COVID-19, requiring immediate action. If a placebo is impl implemented as a legitimate method of treatment for those with no other options available, it could not only lead to a redistribution of necessary funding within he healthcare systems, but over long term a reduction in global health inequality and improved equity in the outcomes of patients with different socioeconomic backgrounds. What strikes me as highly relevant is the Ebola outbreak of 2014 to 2016. With a lack of funding on healthcare and the prevalence of high poverty rates in the regions of Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone led to rapid infection rates. This is evidenced by the fatality rate of, of Ebola during the outbreak being 39.5%, though some sources suggest that the rate may have been as high as 90% in some regions. And these graphs demonstrate the disparities in access to healthcare and resources through the contrast between the number of cases in West Africa and the US, as well as some European nations. If a placebo in this case was provided to individuals in low-income countries, it could massively ignite hope and improve the outlook of these patients, reducing these inequalities over the long term. Also, placebo is far more cost effective in the perspective of everyday healthcare. 
In 2018, $5.6 billion was spent on cancer treatments, including chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and surgical options. If placebo was effective in just 20% of these cases, it would save $520 million a year, providing 11.2 more pediatric visits. It is obviously pertinent in this situation to receive the perspective of practicing physicians, as they are the ones who would fundamentally be responsible for the administration of a placebo. I received the privilege to conduct an interview with a leading general surgeon in Hungary, and I asked her whether a placebo would be beneficial in this context. She highlighted the ethical concerns, but also stated that it helps to rekindle spirits and provide hope for healing in patients, when at the end of the day it can make a large difference in either the amount of time they have left or the distress that is caused to them and their families. This idea of adding life to days and not days to life is another benefit that placebo can bring, and it may further help alleviate pain and suffering for both the patient and their loved ones, and would allow individuals to enjoy their last few days, giving their life an increase in quality. There are obviously a few drawbacks from this policy, namely the undeniable ethical concern that surrounds the placebo, as fundamentally the use of a placebo is deceiving a patient by lying to them, suggesting that an active treatment will alleviate their symptoms. Tying into the medical ethical pillar of justice and non-maleficence, the ideas of whether the course of action is compatible with the law, the patient's rights, and if it's fair and balanced, as well as it's doing no harm, can all be bre breached by placebo. At the same time, when a patient has no other options available, they still have a right to any treatment which may improve outcomes or alleviate their suffering. Though the potential of doing harm through a placebo is a punishable act, if a placebo is proven to have a legitimate effect in either reducing pain or treating the actual ailment at hand, not providing this option is also not delivering fair and balanced treatment. In all honesty, efficacy of a of a placebo all depends on each individual patient and what psychological state they are in. This is a phenomenon I have come up with called the faith factor, which is essentially how much a patient believes in their own healing. Losing this so-called faith factor triggers the loss of effectiveness of the placebo, and I propose to conduct more research as to how to measure the power of this and to what extent it explains the placebo effect. To to conclude, placebo presents a realm of clinical exploration and practice that has yet to be fully explored and utilized. Its mechanism shows that placebos do work, but the extent is always determined by the so-called faith factor. Ultimately, hope is a universal notion which every patient who has no treatment options available will strive towards. And as part of our global health response, the use of combination of pill and no pill placebos will provide the greatest benefit possible. I'd like to personally thank, say thank you so much to the Global Health Leaders Conference team for this opportunity, and also to the highly influential speakers that we have had the privilege of listening to and understanding their fields, and also to my family members and other GHLC participants who were incredibly helpful in rehearsing my presentation. Lastly, I'd like to thank everyone in the audience for listening. I hope it was insightful, and you can now see just how fascinating and relevant this topic is for our global health response on an individual and societal level as well. These are my references, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on my email list below. Thank you so much, and have a great day.